Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In this episode of Everything Music, it's going to be part two of chord families and their modes. Uh, this is the other half that I was going to show you a demonstration of how this works. And I'm going to use minor modal sounds to do the demonstration. So what I've done here is I've taken the key of G and I started with the modal scales starting with G Dorian and then going to Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. Then I did tonic, diminished, and diminished. I'll explain why I did those two at the bottom here. On our first chart, we never talked about having Dorian. We talked about having Dorian, Aeolian, and Phrygian, but we didn't talk about Locrian or tonic, diminished. Locrian was part of the, the scales that you play over half diminished chords. People ask me why that is. Well, when I think about a minor chord, I think it's got one flat three and five, the natural fifth in it. But as long as you have the one and the flat three, it still gives a minor sound and a diminished sound is a form of a minor sound. So what I'm demonstrating in the example I'm gonna play for you is that I'm gonna show how we're increasing tension until the tonic. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use both modal modulation and modal mixture. Modal modulation because we're actually moving around the circle of fifths, but modal mixture because we're playing different modes over the same chord quality. In this case, it'd be G minor. And I'm gonna show you how we use sharp and flat direction modal modulation. We're actually gonna be going flat direction modal modulation to create more harmonic tension as each continual sound builds, each modal sound builds. And I'm, I'm doing them in two bar segments in the little etude that I wrote. Uh, we'll go from G Dorian to G Aeolian, G Phrygian, G Locrian, G Tonic Diminished, G Dominant Diminished, and then we'll resolve to C major. Okay. So anyways, let's talk about Dorian. So you see I have some uh, numbers here in red. And the reason is this. I'm showing you what changes from scale to scale to give it its particular sound. Now, we're not using um, the melodic minor scale, which has a major seventh. We do have one scale that does have a major seventh, which is the uh, tonic diminished scale. But the characteristic notes of Dorian, we want to look for these half-step relationships in the mode that will give it its character, characteristic sound. So really between two and three, so the second and the flat third, so the A to B flat. Well, the B flat gives it the minor sound. But here we have the sixth, okay, which is E and then F, that half-step there. But the sixth, so as long as I have the flat third and the sixth, I know I've got a Dorian sound. You put the flat seven on there, I definitely have a Dorian sound. If I don't have the flat seven, it could still be melodic minor. Anyways. So to go from Dorian to Aeolian, so Dorian is from the key of F, and if we go over here to our circle of fifths, that has one flat. G Dorian has one flat. So we're on the flat side of the circle of fifths. It doesn't matter. As long as we're going in a counterclockwise motion, we're going in a flat direction, okay? So G Aeolian adds the flat six, which does not occur in the Dorian, G Dorian. Well, that comes from the key of B-flat, because that note happens to be E-flat. So G Aeolian is from the key of B-flat. Okay, so we've added a flat six. If I move another notch down the uh, around the circle here, I go to three flats, E-flat major. Well, E-flat major is really G Phrygian, and that adds this extra flat here, the flat two, which is A-flat. Okay, that note is different. That's how it, that differs from that. This, uh, this differs from that. You just look at the notes in red. Then Locrian is actually from A flat major. So we've already gone F major, B flat major, E flat major, A flat major. And that adds the flat fifth. We already have the flat two, flat three, just like Phrygian, right? But now we have the flat five because Phrygian has a natural fifth. Flat six, flat seven, so that's the same. Then we go to tonic diminished, okay? Now that has a lot of similar notes here. Uh, it's got a natural two, it's got a flat three, four, flat five, so that's kind of different. It's got a flat six, it has a double flat of seven, which is really the sixth or the thirteenth. And then it has a major seventh, okay? So it's a sound that I'm using as a logical extension because it really is a um, continuation of tension building towards the tonic. Remember, we're heading towards C major as if this is a two chord in F major, but I'm really thinking a progression around the circle of fifths where I'm gonna to resolve to C major. 
Then we get the D dominant diminished, which is a half step, whole step scale. It has a flat third, it has a natural third too. So we've made a, uh, a, a change in the chord quality here at the, at the end because I want to resolve the C major, so I've added the leading tone in here. But we still have the flat third though, which has really become the sharp nine. Natural six, flat seven. So moving around the circle of fifths here, we go Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, Locrian. And then we've moved beyond the circle of fifths to these two diminished sounds, one that gets more tense than the other, and by adding this leading tone, it's gonna to bring us into the C major sound. First mode, we're gonna start with this Dorian. I'm gonna do it in G. So here's our G Dorian sound. It emphasizes the natural sixth because that natural sixth and the minor third is the sound of Dorian there. If you look at the chords that are in G Dorian, two of them in particular, B flat major and C major. That C major gives you the E natural on it, but, or B flat Lydian, which would be B flat, E, F. So here's F sus4, C major, with a sus4, then B flat sus2, F major, C chordal, C F B flat, B flat major, B flat Lydian, C major sus4. Here's your. So when you want to create this G Dorian sound, you simply need to. Make sure in your uh, in the way that you're voicing your chords that you are including your B flat, which gives you the minor chord sound, and your E. Right there is a is a complete G Dorian sound. I simply have G D B flat E. Now if I put the seventh in there, you know it can't be anything. But G Dorian. That is a Dorian sound right there. Now, the next mode, if we add one flat to this, it becomes G Aeolian. G Dorian comes from F major. G Aeolian is the sixth mode, so it's going to be from B flat major. So we're moving in the flat direction around the circle of fifths, okay? So we're going to add the E flat to it so that Dorian, Aeolian. Here's your Aeolian sound. Um, so if I play... That is a really pure G Aeolian sound there. Okay? Now if I move another key in a flat direction... So I've gone from F major, G Dorian, to B flat major, G Aeolian. Then I'm going to go to E flat major, which would be G Phrygian, which would be, which would be this. So you've got sounds like this. So you have sounds like this. I got one flat two four five 
The flat two and the five are what differentiate it from Locrian. So when I'm in, in my voicings, I'm gonna wanna emphasize those notes. You also have the A flat major, A flat add nine, and that's your G Phrygian sound from E flat major. Now if we move another key around the circle of fifths and go to F major, B flat major, E flat major, and if we go to A flat major, we get G Locrian, okay? That would sound like. So it's gonna emphasize that flat two and flat five. This is where you get this uh, chords like G minor seven flat five, which gives you that sound. But that doesn't have to be the, the sound of the mode. That's more of a modern sound. That's more of a jazz, jazz sound. Emphasize that flat two, and I want to emphasize that, that flat five. The flat five is going to be the C, right? So, in order to get the sound of G Locrian, I'm going to have to emphasize the D flat in here. G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat. So that D flat is a key sound in the A flat, which is going to give me this, the flat two. So the flat two and the flat five are really crucial. So that's our G Locrian sound. The next sound I go to would be a G tonic diminished sound. And that one's going to be going to be um, the voicing I'm using there is F sharp major over G, but it could be anything from G tonic diminished. And that is going to give you the chords like a G tonic diminished is going to be Starting in G, whole step to A, half step to B flat, whole step to C, half step to D flat, whole step to E flat, half step to E natural, whole step to F sharp. I also give you chords like this, um, and we've gone over these in the, if you go back to the dominant and tonic diminished episode, you got these Lydian sounds in there in addition. You've got minor sounds. I can go. F sharp minor to E flat minor to C minor to A minor to F sharp minor. You can get C Lydian. Now these are the cool sounds here. F sharp Lydian. Could be E flat Lydian. Then the next mode I'm going to go to will be G dominant diminished. G, A flat, B flat, B natural, right? So that's a major third. Sharp four, five, 13, flat seven. Okay. So in this one, you've got G major, B flat major. We're moving up minor thirds, D flat major, E major. I'm going to resolve from my G dominant diminished to my C major. So what I've done is I'm going around the circle of fifths, like I talked about uh, on the board in, one, in the other lesson where I was talking about all the modes you can play on minor chords. And I'm starting with the uh, one with the least amount of dissonance, really. I'm, I'm leaving out the, the melodic minor ones. I'm not, I'm not talking about the melodic minor scale. That's, that's approached differently. So here's what we would call modal mixture. And I did a talk on this before, but this is going, taking modes that are played over G minor. 
and I'm moving one key at a time around the circle of fifths in a flat direction. G Dorian, G Aeolian, G Phrygian, G Locrian, G Tonic Diminished, G Dominant Diminished, and resolving to C major. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel and tell your friends about it. Also, if you're interested in the Beato book or getting on my Skype lesson schedule, write to me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. That's all for now. I'm Rick Beato. We'll see you soon.